So far, our LED matrix is able to show a still image. What we'd like to do is display an animation, and before we can do that, we need to organize our code a little better. Notice that the information which contains the image sent to the matrix is spread across our program. For instance, here we see the information for the states of three of our LEDs, specifically that we have an on, off, on for one column of our matrix. What we would like is a single variable somewhere at the top of our program to contain all the information for the image. Let's start by making three arrays, one for each column. So now instead of having 0, 1, 0 here, we have it in our first column, 0, 1, 0, and our second column, 1, 0, 1, and so on. So now let's make use of this variable in the rest of our program. So here, instead of writing the state of the LED, we simply make reference to it in our array. That means we have all of our information in one spot, right here. And it kind of looks like our matrix. Now if you use my wiring, this will actually give the mirror reflection of the image that we see here. But you can solve that pretty easily by swapping the wires for a cathode at pin 7 and pin 15. So if I look at this, I can see right away which ones are being lit. Anything that's a zero is lit. So that seems very useful. Unfortunately, we're still using three variables for one image. What we need is a two-dimensional array, which I will call frame. So frame is really an array of arrays. If I want to look at the first column, I have it here, then my second column, and then here's my third column. And if you think of it that way, these are like my rows, which I know seems backwards. Columns should be this way and rows that way, but we're just using words. Now we don't actually need column one, column two, and column three anymore. We can just take this code and put it in here. So here we have the information from our columns, but it's not as readable, but we can fix that if we change our spacing. And there we have it, one variable that has all of our information for our LED matrix. Now of course we're not using this yet, so we need to go back to our program, to the code down below, and make use of this. So here I've replaced the column arrays with the frame arrays. When I say frame zero, that's making reference to column one, this is column two, and this one was column three. And the second number, that's just which position of that column. So the first, the second, or the third. Now at this point, you should be thinking that these blocks of code are so similar. This block of code is repeated essentially three times, just with some slight differences. What we should look for is what are those differences. First of all, we have 0, 1, and 2. Those are different. But our second number always repeats in the same fashion. If we look at our first number, that's always repeating as 0, 1, 2 as well. And then for our anodes, always turning on and off, always with this sleep time, and the only thing changing is this 0, 1, 2. So we really don't need to write it all like this. Really what we want is we want a for loop that will go through one of these blocks three times, and have it go through so one time it equals 0, one time it equals 1, and one time it equals 2. So let's see what that looks like. Now we want to have a variable which will be equal to 0, 1, and 2. And we can do that by using range 3. So careful, this doesn't mean 1, 2, 3. This means 0, 1, 2, which is perfect for what we need. Now the question is, where do we put those i's? Well, first of all, let's be clear about what code is inside this for loop. So we need some code for our cathodes and some code for our anodes, and the rest down here we'll delete later. Now here we want to go through cathode 0, cathode 1, cathode 2. But this part, we want to cycle between zeros, ones, and twos. So that should be our i. Next, we'll deal with our first anode on our first iteration of the for loop. But after that, we want to do the second one, the third one. So we need to change that as well to i. OK, and that's it. We just now need to get rid of all this extra code underneath. So even though in this video we haven't had our program do anything new, that is, the output of our program will still be the same, we have gotten rid of a lot of extra code, and we've put our information in a more accessible way, that is, a way that we can change more easily. And so the next step will be how do we make an animation?